guys. How are you doing? What day is it? Today is Wednesday. I was just sitting here laying on the couch and I was just like, hmm, maybe I should do a live and find out what in the world is wrong with these dudes. Like there is something in the water. I don't know exactly what it is, but if you're watching this on YouTube, this is Coach B. Wiley here doing an impromptu, uh, what is this, TikTok live? And so I was just sitting here watching Judge Judy. I just got done filming 10 videos. And so I'll probably do more. There's more where those came from. But then I was like, let me just do a live. Haven't been on live in a little minute. Because I'm wondering what's going on with the modern day men. The modern day men, I was in the comments with a young lady the other week. And we were talking about the modern day men. How they just want you to pull out their chair, honey. Open my door. Put my napkin in my lap. And it's giving either they want you to pursue them and or they see women as an opponent. They see women as the enemy and they're just really not trying to be vulnerable or be open about how they feel out of fear that you're going to dog dog him out. And it just doesn't make sense. So if you're tuning in, we're just talking about the dudes, the modern day dudes like What's up with the modern day dudes? Why are dudes so all over the place? It used to be a day. See, I'm old school. It used to be a time when you would meet a dude and he would come up to you. He's nice. He's charming. He's warm. He's inviting. He introduces himself. He wants to take you out on a date. He then calls you the next day, invites you out on a date, plans the date. You go out. You have a good time. He don't try to push up on you. He might give you like a kiss on the hand or on the cheek, but he's not trying to get you to his house. He's not trying to Netflix and chill. He's not trying to bend you over in the back seat. And it's just like, where are those dudes? Don't get it twisted. These dudes still exist. However, there has been a growing number of guys out here who are bitter but then want to say the women are bitter when the woman is just working on herself. She's getting herself together. She's learning how not to be desperate anymore. She's working on her mental health, her spiritual, her spiritual health. She's growing her community of girlfriends. She's going to church. She's praying. And it's like the more women in my profession, every time for every time I write, or not write, we'll write books, but every time I post a video that is uplifting to the woman, there are so many dudes that are combative. So Patricia says, dang, those days seem to be gone. Like Patricia, I don't know what's happening, but I don't know if we're in the twilight zone or what, but there's a switch and I'm not sure exactly what's going on, but I don't know. All I can tell you lady is, don't choose the bear. <laughs> a lot of women are choosing the bear. I actually made a video. I think it's the video that's up right now. My video of today is about why so many women are now choosing the bear. And when I first heard that, I was randomly on a video and I kept seeing women choose the bear. I'm like, what does that even mean? And so I get it now. And it's just like, but why does it have to be that extreme? Why is it that in order for a woman to feel safe, protected, covered, secure, why would she have to then choose a wild animal versus a guy who should be in his right mind, who should know right from wrong, who is supposed to know how to treat someone who isn't an animal that has to be trained, yet he is choosing to cheat, choosing to gaslight, choosing to manipulate. Like, what is this? How can we solve this puzzle right here? Because don't get it twisted. We all have our experiences. All of us, each and every one of us have our dating experiences. However, why are we allowing our unpleasant experiences dictate how we then engage with women? Why are we then not just learning from that experience, doing some self-assessing, being one-on-one -on -one with ourselves, doing some tweaking. I like to call it tweaking because we're not perfect. So we're always doing some tweaks on becoming better. Why aren't we doing that and then presenting ourselves and then attracting something different versus using that previous experience that did not serve us and then punishing every woman that we meet until I guess we tired or dead and then, then we're happy. I don't understand why so many dudes, because these aren't all dudes. I would never say all dudes do anything because all women don't do anything. However, I will say, where do we think, where do we think this comes from? Like, what is it? 
with so many guys turning their backs on quality women and or deliberately dogging out quality women. Like, make it make sense. I don't ever really, when I say good man, good woman, I always do this. I always put a quotation because really you can have a good man and he's not the right man. So that don't mean you just stick with him because he good. Absolutely not. You get with someone who you are in divine align with, alignment with, who you have the same beliefs in, like you probably wouldn't want to get with an atheist if you believe in God. You probably wouldn't want to date a guy who chain smokes if you know you have asthma. You probably wouldn't want to get with a dude who has zero kids because he don't like kids and you have three. Like it don't make sense. However, so many women, so many women are out here dating these guys and it just doesn't make sense. Just like you're signing up, just like the dudes are deliberately dogging women out. A lot of women are signing up for red flags. Like you'll see the red flag in the, in the first conversation, but you'll overlook it. You'll say, oh, well, maybe that's what dating is now because I've been out the game for so long. So maybe this is normal or he's a man. Let a man be a man. Boys will be boys. It's like you're justifying bad behavior and then you're tolerating bad behavior. And then the tolerance levels in our community when we're talking about single women the tolerance level is like there's no cap. There should be a cap. Like at work, you have to think about it. Always compare dating to working because everybody got to work and have a job, right? And it's like at work, how much are you willing to tolerate? Are you willing to tolerate longer hours and shorter pay or no pay at all? Are you willing to tolerate working on the weekends when when you signed up for the job it said you never have to work any weekends and all of a sudden they need you every weekend? Would you tolerate your boss cussing you out and calling you out your name every Friday during your weekly meeting? Absolutely not. So that why that's why it baffles me and it makes me boggle my brain as to why so many single women are choosing to deal with someone who is trifling, treating them wrong, treating them bad and cussing them out. Like that doesn't feel good. I don't know where we got it twisted. That toxic love, this tough love is supposed to be the right love. And if we can just make it through this barrier, if we can just break through his barrier, that there is love on the other side. When in actuality, why do you have to break through anything? Why can't he just be open, engaging, warm, kind from the gate like why do you have to get your hard hat on why do you have to get your drill and your hammer and your nail and chisel through this stone ice cold heart of his i'm telling you ladies if you're dating someone right now and it's like hard so hard to date and just to have a simple conversation about what his intentions are with dating not necessarily dating you but just what are your intentions with dating what are your goals have you ever been rejected? What was that like? How do you feel if there's like this wall when it comes to engaging about things that aren't, what do you do for a living? Where do you live? Where did you go to school? When you're a particular age, you want to have particular conversations. And if you're dating with the intention to get married or be with someone long term, then you got to think about the stuff that you're asking about and quit wasting time asking stupid questions and quit specifically ignoring red flags when they show up. And the one thing that gets on my nerves about women, the one thing that I cannot stand is when women have a problem, like you see a problem, I wish I can prop this phone up. Let me see if I can, because I'm like laying on the couch is with, I might be able to prop it up like that. Hold on. The one thing I can't stand, hopefully you can hear me. Can you guys hear me clearly? Hopefully you can. I hope it's not like smuggled or anything like the, like the noise of it. But the one thing that I can't stand about women is that you'll see a problem like you're dating this guy, right? And then there's a problem and you'll go to everybody but him about the problem to ask them about the problem that you're in with the dude versus going to him and then you'll say to your friends after she says well why don't you just talk to him about it and then you'll say well i'm not a confrontational person like how since when since when is addressing an issue 
being confrontational. Like I will never for the life of me understand why any woman believes that when she addresses something with a guy, a red flag, that that's in turn her being confrontational. That doesn't make any sense. And if you're watching this and if that's your reaction to why you're avoiding having a conversation, thinking it's going to go away, I'm here to tell you it's not going to go away. It's going to actually get worse. Usually bad behavior, it starts real small and then it grows. Just think about anything, any kind of problem in your life. Let's say you got a leak in your in your ceiling. It ain't just going to go away because you look at it but act like you don't see it. Hell no. It's going to get bigger and bigger. And the next thing you know, you're in bed one morning and the whole roof is caving in on you. And now you got to move. So for those of you who are watching this and you're wondering, are all the good dudes married or playing for the other team? You got you to gotta think about it. First, you want to always think about your last three situations, whether that was dating, whether you were in a relationship or whether you were in a situationship, whatever you want to call it. You want to think back on the guys that you attract, why you attract them, what's that about them, how does that benefit you, how does dating, liking them serve you, and then start there. And then you want to think about what you could have done wrong, what what you didn't do right, how you responded, because we always want to self-assess ourselves as well as think about the dudes that we're entertaining because we're not perfect. Ain't nobody perfect. Even me, I've been doing life coaching. I've actually been online talking like this for over a decade, 10 and a half years. And now of course I'm a professional life coach. Like I literally do this for a living. I started actually doing it as my job, as my career in 2020. And that's only because someone was like, I think you need to just go ahead and do it. You're already doing it anyway. So why not charge people to do it? And so with that being said, when I first started this life coach, I didn't even know I was going to be a life coach. I was just wanting to empower women. And I wrote my book. Hello, my name is single. And then I was just like, all right, I just want to help women. I just want to show women that you don't have to be desperate. You don't have to be naive. And even if you are naive, you can learn how to not be naive and you don't have to settle and to love yourself and all the things. And so I wrote that. And then now I'm just here all the time just to let you know, reassure you that, hey, look, you could have been like me, like me. I used to attract emotionally unavailable men all the time, up and down. That was my jam. Loved it, lived for it, suffered in it. However, I looked at who I was attracting, why I liked that. Where did it stem from? Ultimately, I realized it stemmed from my childhood. That's what I want you to do. Get down to the bottom of why you're attracting certain men. And then for the men, like you can't change a dude. A dude can be just as hurt and have, have had previous unpleasant dating experience. However, that doesn't give him the right to lash out on you to make you pay for what someone else did. That doesn't give him the right to try to break you down because some dudes out here, their goal because they've been hurt is to try to break a woman down and to hurt her. And usually the women that they do this to are the most naive, caring, kind women who are inexperienced and who literally just want love and want a connection. So if you find yourself in this situation to where you're attracting a certain kind of guy who isn't a quality man, and what's quality? Let's talk about what's quality. Quality, you know it's a quality dude based on how you feel. A quality guy is going to be kind, considerate, caring. He's going to literally check in. He's going to actually give a damn. And you'll know he's not quality by what he says to you, how he talks to, to you. Does he leave you on red? Is he checking in when you're talking? Is he actually listening? Is he distracted? Is he always on his phone? Is he available? Is he always available to his friends? But when it's you, there's always something. Do you know his friends? Have you met his friends? Do they know about you? Like the whole list could go on. I guess I could actually write a quick little ebook on what a quality man looks like, like the basics of the quality guy because so many women are confused about what a man can do, what he should do and what you don't have to teach him to do. You don't have to teach a man how to pursue you. You absolutely don't. Now I will say this. I do have a client and the guy she's with, he was more in like a friends with benefits type of thing with the last girl that he dated. So he wasn't used to checking in and being consistent and considering her and his decisions. However, she talked to me. I told her how to talk to him. And what it came down to is just having a conversation. All she had to do and all she did was address the fact that he doesn't check in. 
He doesn't tell her, hey, I'm going to go over here and then been gone for hours and don't hear from him. But to him, he ne he's never had to do that. He's never been required to do that. So he just didn't know. It wasn't like he was being a doucher. He literally just didn't even think that that's something he should be doing. So she addressed it. And guess what? Now he does it. He checks in all is well. And that's the thing. A lot of women are so afraid to talk to a dude and tell him some things. You're so afraid to talk, but you're willing to share your body with them. Like make it make sense because that don't even make sense. That's crazy. And so in that situation, if you're afraid, that's a red flag on you, sis. If you're afraid to talk to a guy and tell him what you're requiring in the dating situation, then that is a red flag. You should be able to talk to him just like I'm talking to you. And I, you're a complete stranger to me. I'm a stranger to you. However, if you have something to say, you should be able to say it. And he should create a space. There should be a space between the both of you guys to where it's comfortable, to where it's engaging and open and inviting so that you are comfortable saying what you're saying. So the long story short is men going their own way, let them go. Because at this point, women are starting to go their own way. And now we have a divide. And when we have a divide between men and women, it's just like, how does the world keep turning? How do we keep creating? Like, how does that even work? It doesn't, right? So the best thing we could do is work on ourselves first. We work on ourselves first. We get our ish together. I couldn't be the better version that you see today when it comes to dating, unless I went through my experiences, I self-assessed, I regrouped, I took my pause for the cause, I created my own books, I learned from other people's experiences. I educated myself. I went through training. Like it's so much, but I'm a professional. So you don't have to do all that stuff that I did, but <laughs> that's because I'm teaching and you're not teaching anything. So you're not going to do the strenuous program as I did, but you will do the taking your pause for the cause. I talk about that in videos. You will heal. What is it? Um, after a breakup, it's uh, you heal, deal. I wrote it. It's in here somewhere. Just check out my videos about breakups. Deal, heal, surrender, forgive. That's another thing you must do. You must then tweak yourself, make the necessary tweaks, whatever you want and desire in that dude, you must be that. So like attracts like. So if you continue to attract emotionally unavailable dudes and you have to think about yourself, not like, why is that? Where does this come from? Is it me? Is it my parents? Is it how I was raised? Is it learned behavior? Like, what is this? It's so many things that you must break down, but you must do it to become the better version of yourself. If you want to attract quality, then you must become quality and being a quality anything is going to take some time, some time out, some time in, some practice, some learning, some hands on training, some educating, some just sitting back and troubleshooting all the things because it's you and it's like you're building, I ain't gonna say a robot, but it's almost like you're building a robot to be whatever you want it to be. And then you build it up to how you want it to go and then it flows and then it's good, but it's actually your mind and you're building your mind and you're replacing you're replacing negative seeds of lack, negative seeds of unworthiness, negative seeds of unattractiveness, negative seeds of can't get a man, ain't gonna have no man. And you're replacing it with, I am worthy, I am valuable, I love myself unconditionally, I'm working on whatever it is, whether it be my finances, my education, my my outer body, health, whatever it is you're working on, whatever it is you want to attract, you must become that. And don't talk yourself out of attracting what you want because a lot of women will talk themselves right on in to some trifling mess and what you want to do is decide that you deserve to attract you deserve to attract a good quality caring considerate man you deserve it and why do you deserve it because you've done the work because you've done the work you believe in yourself you love yourself you're not going to tolerate less than and just to be with a dude and you're just going to do whatever it is in your power that you see that needs to be done in order to get what you want and sometimes that means outsourcing someone like me outsourcing a life coach outsourcing a therapist going to your uncle your brother your cousin a dude that does not see you romantically who has an unbiased opinion who knows you front to back who can offer you insight from a male's perspective like these are all the things there are so many resources and things we can pick up on besides beating ourselves up talking to our friends and our family members who are in jacked up situations and dating relationships versus just going and doing what I said, looking at videos that are available on social media. There are so many videos available specifically on my social media, Coach B. Wiley on all the things. Then you want to talk to the guys in your family who know you, you want to get their opinion. 
then you want to think back on your three previous dating experiences and what are some patterns that are there that are not that aren't good that aren't the worst that aren't bad that what you did do good then you want to take your pause for the cause you want to do that pause for the cause that's where you don't date anyone you just get with yourself and you work on your three s's self-care self-development self-reliance that's another book of mine all this is the link is in my bio for my books then after that you want to put yourself back out there because we're practicing right we're practicing which is preparing ourselves for our do so then you want to get out there practice see what you've learned see what you need to work back on sometimes you need to go back for the pause for the cause sometimes you're good and you can keep going but whatever it is those are literally five things that I just gave you off the top of my head things that must be done in order for you to get what you want but beating yourself up pointing the finger at a dude not taking accountability none of that's ever going to work not going to get any good results for that and as far as the men ain't nothing you can do about him being hurt he has to deal with that and if he wants to leave you on red ghost you be disrespectful be a liar manipulate gaslight whatever don't allow yourself to tolerate that kind of behavior. That's it. That's all. So if you're still here, number one, thank you so much for being here. If you're watching me on YouTube, make sure you subscribe. If you want to know all about my books, how to, um, what's my first book? Um, Single Ready to Mingle. That is on Barnes & Noble and Google Play. And then I have Successfully Solving Single. That link is in my bio. I have How to Communicate with Your Mate. That link is in my bio. I have um, your freebie. You have a freebie. Go get your freebie right now. How to avoid Mr. Waster Time. That's in my bio. Link in my bio. That's free. And then the silent treatment. This is the book that sells out the most. The silent treatment ebook is your jam. So many women are dealing with men who are zipping their lips and outwardly deciding they don't have to speak they don't have to engage and that she needs to get over it she needs to sweep it under the rug and i don't give a f either way so make sure you download that book link is in my bio follow like subscribe share i got you back if you ever need a life coach i got you that link is in my bio too my mentor.life coach b wiley talk to you later